I'm the coach. You're locked into the NFL on EA Sports. We're just about set to get started, and this ought to be a good one between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals. With that, let's get up to Paul Brown Stadium in Cincinnati. For the call, we bring in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, thank you. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League takes us to the Queen City of Cincinnati and Paul Brown Stadium right on the banks of the Ohio River. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Cincinnati Bengals. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon to my left, Charles Davis. And Charles, you focus on this Bengal team entering play. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. Meanwhile, for the visiting Steelers, they were losers their last time out. They're going to try to get back in the win column, but obviously they're going to have to do that in a hostile environment. And sometimes that actually works to your advantage. Now you've got to band together your team, the us against the world mentality. Let's see if they can use it and get a victory. is upon us. It's week 12 of the NFL season, and we're underway on EA Sports. This one fielded at the 5. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. Leading them out is the former first-rounder from all the way back in 2004 from Miami of Ohio, Ben Roethlisberger. He had the numbers of a game last week that if you win, you talk about him being a gritty guy, managing the game, getting it done. But they lost. So obviously, two interceptions, one touchdown pass, that's not going to be good enough. Got to get that changed around. Now here's a pass on first down. It's knocked away and incomplete. Coverage there by Von Bell. And let's take a look at the Steeler offense. And they come off a tough loss last week. And what's their reward? A second straight road game. Rarely are teams happy about scheduling. They're always calling the league office saying, how come we have this game and that game? But when you're coming off of a loss on the road and you go right into another one, that's a difficult task. Nowhere to go that time. Might have gotten a yard up to the 25. A look there at the defensive starters for Cincinnati. They played really well in the win over the Raiders a week ago. And they needed to be because that game, was a game you don't see very often anymore. Low scoring, slugging it out in the trenches. One play can make the difference type of a game, and they got it done. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He's going to walk on deep left side. And that's caught inside the 35. A big play that time for Pittsburgh. 43 yards. Things are looking pretty darn good on this first drive, aren't they? Came right out, set the tone, this time with a big pass play. And if the peek behind the curtain that they gave us or their game plan, I don't think that's going to be the last one we see. I think you're exactly right about that. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Now the former fourth-round pick, it's Kalen Balaj. An agile move and a nice gain, then dropped at the 25-yard line. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. On second down now, it's Harris. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and they'll look to convert on what will be a third and four. 
From the gun on third down, it's Raffelsberger. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Whenever I see an in route dropped, as we just saw in that play, I'm always thinking that in the back of their mind, they're worried about what's coming at them because they're going towards traffic on that route as opposed to being away from it and maybe having a little bit more space. So on fourth down, the Steelers call on the number of Chris Boswell for the field goal try. Right hash mark of 42-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. In the end, the opening drive, Charles does yield points. Maybe not the touchdown that they wanted, though. Yeah, but bottom line, they wanted to get something out of that drive, and they did that. Three points, they won't turn that down at all. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they will be led out by their 6-3 quarterback. And what I'm looking for from him today, the things every quarterback is looking to do, lead his team to a victory. Doesn't matter whether he's throwing it, running it, handing it off, however he has to do it, as well as exhibiting some leadership, that's what he's trying to accomplish. It's P. Ryan to begin the drive. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. And the big boys up front in the trenches. What do you think of the O-line, Charles? I love them because this is a group that's so cohesive. They know what the man next to them is going to do at all times, and they operate as a terrific unit. Second and six, just inside the 30. They'll run it here with Pirine. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? And the starting defensive unit here for Pittsburgh. Cameron Hayward is a defensive lineman, but many of us, especially guys of my vintage, remember his father, Craig Ironhead Hayward, who was a running back. I think Cameron decided he'd rather hit people than be hit. They'll look to throw. Open man is Uzama. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn him yet another first down. When you give up points on the opening drive, in this case a field goal, you'd hate to go three and out. They avoid that. They do, and it's also walking that fine line mentally, too, as a coach, isn't it? Because you want to emphasize to your team exactly what you said. All right, we gave up a field goal. Let's go back and at least equal that, guys. But if we don't, you don't want them to feel like it's the end of the world either. Nice that they were able to pick up the first down there, help them relax a little bit. A pretty nice work defensively there on the first down run as they hold him to a gain of a couple. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Here's P. Ryan. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. They'll set up a throw. Going down the middle, and it's complete. Catch number 44 of on the year. It's a first down. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in the paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like your shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? They go play action here on first down. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball in the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing round. Step. 
Now P. Ryan. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. A rare misstep on that last play because the drive has been strong, but now it's second and 12. And to give this time to the tailback. It's a gain of maybe three, but it's going to leave him with still about eight or nine to go on third down. Back to throw here. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off at the 13. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down to the hands of the wrong team. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Work what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. Throwing on second and three. Roethlisberger. Quick hitter here. It's complete. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. The numbers for him from a week ago. Five catches, 66 yards. And he was able to get open there, but that's not always easy against this bunch defensively. We are deep enough into the season where numbers count. This is the number one rated defense in the NFL. He'll have a tough time. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he'll get about four across the 30 to the 32. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. So after the penalty, now they need just a yard on second down. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. And that's incomplete. Trey Waynes, the Michigan State man, right there in coverage. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. That's a strong running. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. A three-yard loss. Fourth down now. Not the result they were looking for there on third down. They end up taking a loss on the play. The only person happy now, the punter, gets to go out there and show mom that he gets to play in the game. Fourth down, here comes a Steeler punter, Jordan Berry, to kick it away. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. The Bengals offense now, they head back onto the field. And they will begin with, should we call it, far from ideal starting field position, their own two-yard line. So what's your definition of ideal? The one-yard line on the other side of the field. <laughs> yes, exactly right. So yes, your definition is apropos in this case. A bit of an opening there on the first down run as they get this forward for about six yards. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to pump the football successfully. Now they're talking about putting together a drive. Seven yards there and a first down. So still backed up, but the situation not as dire now. First and 10 at the 14. 
And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. It's a Bengal first down, a pickup of 11. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them to have much space to rumble. Here we go. 198. Watch 98. 98 to Mike. All right, team, let's get it. They'll set up to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Stefan it in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. the sack they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17 and he'll give it here to his running back and he goes nowhere he'll lose yardage back at the 17 he lost two there and it's third down so on the heels of the sack, they knock him backwards in the running game. So now it's up to the offense coordinator talking directly into the helmet of his quarterback to instill a little bit of confidence here. Call the play with authority, call with confidence, and let him know this one is the winner. And now they're looking for 19 yards here on third down following two negative plays. Now back to throw. And that is incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So on is the lefty, Kevin Huber, to kick it away for the Bengals here on fourth down. It's always agonizing to me to see a guy make a mistake in this phase of the game because you can t it's, it's all on him. All eyes there. He's got a chance to make a punt return, and instead he ends up putting it on the carpet. Puts it on the carpet. The little rubber pellets shoot up. Never a good sign for a returner on this field turf surface. No, not at all. And a bunch of them go up when they're all trying to get to the football, don't they? And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. On second down, this is Harris. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. One thing rookies need to learn at this level and quick, make a cut, be decisive, and go. Because in college, you could dance around and wait for a hole to open because you're probably a better athlete than most of the guys on the field, but not on the NFL level. The Steelers on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And that will be incomplete. It's always a goal that's really nice defensively when you can rally to the football and make sure there's enough contact to force an incompletion. Force an incompletion and force another punt. Here's Jordan Berry now as he'll kick it away for the second time. <laughs> 51 yards on the punt there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. 
So now the Bengal offensive unit back out onto the field. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. Now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Second and three. That's caught by his tight end, Uzelma. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Second quarter, two minutes remain. Three-nothing our score. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Well, first down screen pass, good for five. Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and five. Finding a safety valve here. That's complete. Give him two yards on that play, and that's going to lead to a third down. The drop to throw. A bullet throw, but incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. Here's Kevin Huber now as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And it's out of bounds. Now we'll see what the side judge says. He says out at the eight-yard line. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong? You know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not have the balls go through goalposts. Now after that last play, there's a Bengal down on the field. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Line of scrimmage back at their own three now as they come up second and long. A give to Harris. He'll try to get forward, but he's going to be stopped at his tracks at about the three. They'd like to avoid punting from their own end zone so they could use something here on third down. On third down, here's Harris. And not much there as he gets it up to about the five-yard line. Now the Bengals get a signal for their third and final timeout as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 44. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Pressure from his right, and he goes down hard, flat on his back. Credit the sack to Shaquem Griffin. They're going to look to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Nifty running there, but it'll come on what should be the final play of half number one. They'll look to throw. He's got his man, boy. So we've reached halftime. All we have to show for the first half, a lone field goal. 3 nothing. our score. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, bye weeks, they're over. We've once again got a full slate of games to get to as we take you around the NFL here in Week 12. We'll get started up at Lucas Oil Stadium in the capital city of Indianapolis. And it's the Buccaneers who are out in front with that game closing in on halftime. The Buccaneers trying to hold on and claim victory. From there, we're off to check out another game. And they have the lead over the visiting New York Jets. 
The Texans seem to be on their way to what would be a good victory. Lastly, let's get out to Jacksonville. See what's happening with the Jaguars at TIAA Bank Field. And they lead the visiting Atlanta Falcons at halftime. Marvin Jones, a touchdown catch in that first half. In the game you've been watching, it was Ben Roethlisberger who led the way offensively in the first half. His guys lead, though by only a field goal. Still anybody's game. As we send it back to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Thank you, sir. A field goal separates these two teams as we come back for this second half. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead, and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. And maybe time for this offense to really hit the reset button. They were shut out in the first half, but still, they're right in this game. They certainly are. What I like about it is that you actually continue to play. You know, you just find a way to make a few plays yourself, and you noted it. Right there on the border in this game, they're not that far off. He's got to find a play or two, and they could be very happy at that point. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Stephon Tewitt, the former Notre Dame man. He's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. We are seeing two really confident defenses imposing their will on these offenses in this game. Yeah, absolutely, going toe for toe. Just curious if one of these offenses can wake up a little bit. Is there any way they can find something that can pop, something big to knock them back on their heels? Go now. The Steelers now Get in it. the nickel here on switch, third down. Switch, switch, switch. Shoot. Looking to throw. He completes it to Evans. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll be fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath, by all means. Here's Kevin Huber now, as he's on to punt for Cincinnati. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And this will be out of bounds, and they spot it at the 15-yard at the line. Not too bad. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris again. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. First down, it's Harris. Von Bell up to make the tackle. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. They'll find Juju Smith-Schuster. That catch good for five. It's third down. Here's Roethlisberger to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That one good for 14 yards and a stealer first. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? 
That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. Couple of first downs to kick off the drive. Here's first and 10 up at the 46. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And down he goes at the 49, a three-yard pickup. Now here's another carry for Harris. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Seventh play of the drive now as they come up on a third and three. Now Roethlisberger to throw. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. How about 25 yards on third down? They'll take it. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's gonna be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. On the draw, it's Harris. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Maybe just a slight detour on what's been a strong drive. here, second and 11. They'll run again with Harris. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. On third down, Roethlisberger. He'll have a first down inside the 10. And down to the seven-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right, safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. They'll run. Here's Harris. They'll get this halfway home from the eight to the four on a gain of four. Line of scrimmage again, the four yard line. Second and goal. Back now in Cincinnati. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point. Just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. Line of scrimmage again, the four yard line. Second and goal. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Harris. Pushing and fighting his way in for a Steeler touchdown. A great play there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. Well, we got a little bit of everything on that run. Offensive line creating some space. But how about the guy running behind his pads into the end zone? What does that mean when a guy says running behind his pad? It means that he's going to be a physical runner. That way he's able to use his shoulder pads, his forearms, anything to ward off people to power his way forward. Extra point put through by Boswell. And the lead grows to 10 nothing. So that drive spans 13 plays. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Cincinnati offense ready to see what they can do here. And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right. Keeping hope alive.
pressure comes and the Steelers take him down. Stephon to it. Make that now eight sacks for him on the season. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. The job becomes twice as difficult now after the sack. It's second and 20. Switch it, switch it, switch it. Come on, switch it. Go. They'll drop the throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Got some room with the 30. And all the way up to the 37-yard line. Good work after the catch. Going to net him 23 and a first. Even though this offense doesn't have a single point to its name, they're not totally out of this game yet. A touchdown here, they could be in business. And how about that last play? Now they've got momentum going, so you know I'm a big advocate. Get back on the line of scrimmage. Throw another play at them while you've got them rocked on their heels. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Back to throw. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Cameron Hayward in there to get him, and that is sack number six now for him on the year. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. They'll look to throw here. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. It's Devin Bush, the linebacker, who picks it. And they have the football and will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Well, you're trailing. It's the fourth quarter, and you've got to throw the football. But the defense knows this, too. So they're just going to sit back, bring in an extra defensive back or two, the old nickel or dime strategy, Brandon, and wait for you to put that bad boy up for grabs. And this one winds up being intercepted. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Now listen, it's a team game, we know that, but where would these guys be right now, Charles, without their defense? They take over here following the turnover. Defense did it again, but on offense, they have to feel like, hey, we need to do something. You're exactly right. You just go, mentioned it. the defense did it again. They bailed them out on a number of occasions in this contest. It's time for them to repay the defense at the least. Keep the ball for a while. Give those guys a break so they can catch their breath. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Second and five now. Roethlisberger. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. On first and ten, it's Reifelsberger. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Chalk that up as their first sack in this game, and they tallied four a week ago. And probably not as much exultation in that sack as what took us so long. Because when you get four the previous week, you're counting on continuing that momentum. They didn't get that done in the first half of the game. Let's see now if they start to bring even more exotic pressure towards the quarterback. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. They'll run with Harris. And he'll get about four as he's brought down at the 24. The Steelers on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This is third and 14. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. He gets it complete to Harris. It's a gain of five. 
And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware a ball may come your way. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. It'll be from the right hash, and it'll be a 36-yarder. And Boswell's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors, yet still play perfect football. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Second and nine now. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The rookie from Michigan there defensively. That's Devin Bush making the play. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert. On third and nine, he finds his target, it's Evans. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. Now let's see how yeah, the offense still out there. They elect to go on fourth and 11. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that is incomplete. The Bengals try it, but it doesn't work out. And the Steelers, they're going to take over an excellent field position. So still over three minutes remaining in this game, but boy, not getting that when that hurt. That's a little bit demoralizing, so they have to be careful about that because still have an opportunity if they can get some things done on defense. But now, since they've taken over on downs, a team with the ball, guess what? Going to four-minute offense, maybe they can put this thing away. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field with this lead and the football things obviously looking good, but maybe... Yeah, you've taught me this before. Maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them. Protect them. Take care of the ball. Move it downfield. Run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try to score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. They run again with Harris. He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. Roethlisberger. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. 
So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. And the scoreboard on their side. They're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand collar. Here's Harris. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. They'll keep it on the ground. Harris. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. And now with 152 to go, we get another pause of the action. A timeout here defensively. And a nickel look here for the Bengals as they try to defend this on third. Now Harris. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Oh, Roethlisberger going to throw. Feeling the pressure here and taken down. A sack back at the seven. Sam Hubbard making his presence felt to the backfield. Well, surprise, surprise. First and goal at the one. No quarterback sneak. No running play. They decide to throw for it, but the pressure got to him quickly and put the quarterback down. If nothing else, they've already taken a couple minutes off the clock here already as they come up second down. This is Harris. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. They get three yards closer, but still work to do. It's third and goal. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So for the Steelers, they move back over 500 now at 6-5. And, and they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for Cincinnati, the playoffs look to be out of reach now as they drop to 4-8. And, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, we thank our entire crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. This is the NFL on EA Sports.